Peace and welcome to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Rod. The host, thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Folks, we got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, let's talk about should racist and hate speech disqualify you from public service? Uh, looking at this rash of leaked audio from op- officials in cities and states across the country. There aren't a lot of laws against this type of speech as on the books right now, but should there be? We'll have that conversation. Also, we're gonna talk about the recovery of the young 16 year old boy, Ralph Yarl, who was shot in the head face and shot in the head by a white neighbor for ringing at his doorbell, at the wrong doorbell. And we'll talk about what's been the happening and some of the big developments in that story. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, lawsuit against Freaknik documentary. Wow, that's crazy. And sports with my guy Scotty of Offscript TV. We're going to talk a little bit about the lessons of betting on yourself, folks. So, well, we got a lot of big discussions and we want you to join us. So make sure you do so and stay with us as we jump into it. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. All right, folks, welcome, 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 welcome to the culture here on the Black Star Network. Happy Wednesday. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Big shout out to my online culture crew. What's up, crew? What's up? Good to have y'all join us this afternoon. Folks, we got a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in it. And uh, I got, I'm so happy because it's Wednesday and I got my sister, Suzette Speaks, who is a TV and digital uh, platform host. He's also an attorney out of the great state of Florida. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why you clown us? Everybody in Florida is not the same, guys, okay? But good to be here. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. All right, uh, first, we got a lot of big conversations set up, folks, and we want y'all to join us in the discussion. Make sure you post your comments in the YouTube chat. Uh, Make sure that you post it on Facebook as we're streaming live on those platforms, as well as BlackStarNetwork.com and on Amazon News as well on Roku TV. All right, Suzette, let's start with um, uh, this very, very, uh, very interesting and disturbing trend that I'm seeing happening across the country as we're hearing more leaked audio. And it's... it's, uh, these, this story and, and these stories are, you know, just an intersection of a lot of things from, you know, illegally or legally, ta- you know, taping someone's rec- taping someone while they're having a conversation to, you know, the fact that a lot of this conversation contains hate speech or, or any type of um, racist rhetoric and looking at how the law is going to accommodate or how the law would handle all of these situations. And this is coming because of the latest leaked audio. We talked about it yesterday on the show where we talked about the leaked audio from Tennessee where those GOP officials um, were complaining about being called racist, conspiring against those two black lawmakers down there. But then we also saw the situation in Oklahoma that just came up and where the governor of Oklahoma had to has been calling for the resignation of the sheriff and other top officials in a rural county there in Oklahoma because they were caught on on uh, on tape recorder as saying some hateful things about black people being uh, uh, not being able to to institute lynching in, in the state anymore and even talked about killing a reporter and their father a son and father who had been reporting on corruption and greed and other issues in the state and how they can knock them off, put them into a ground. Like, what the hell is going on? So I want to share this first. And then, you know, Suzette, if you can share with us your your insight about this, because I don't see that a lot of these cities, a lot of these states, they don't have laws against this type of speech that will disqualify a person from public office. But let me share with you the latest out of Oklahoma. Take a look at this here, folks. Um, this is this is because of what the governor has said in Oklahoma, and he has called for the resignation of the sheriff and top officials 
in the county that were recorded talking about beating, killing, and burying a father-son team of local reporters and lamenting that they could no longer hang black people with a damned rope. Governor Kevin Stitt uh, called for McCurtain County Sheriff Kevin Clardy, County Commissioner Mark Jennings, Sheriff's Investigator Alicia Manning, and Jail Administrator, uh, Administrator Larry Hendricks to step down after the McCurtain County Gazette News published an article over the weekend about what was captured on the recording. The governor said, quote, I am both appalled and disheartened to hear of the horrid comments made by officials in McCurtain County. Uh, he said there's simply no place for such hateful rhetoric in the state of Oklahoma, Oklahoma, especially by those that serve to represent the community through their respective office. Mm. So this is a Republican governor who is looking to uh, uh, penalize other Republican officials. But my problem is, and this is something that came up, they started an investigation there in Oklahoma, Suzette, and the Sheriff's County, the Sheriff's Department determined that the recording was done illegally, right? And so it, this opens the door for any type of prosecution against these individuals not happening. And so I'm looking and I'm wondering, thinking to myself, if we've seen this in Oklahoma, we've seen this in Tennessee, here in Los Angeles, some, some Latino uh, council members were saying some disparaging or racist things as well on, on, on tape. But there aren't any laws to remove them. All we can do is call for their resignation, but there aren't any laws to really like take this speech and say, you know what, this automatically disqualifies you from public service. Do we need to go in that direction at this point? Well, Faraji, this uh, type of example yet again shows us that, you know, we unfortunately in our country are fighting a very live and real battle against bigotry and racism. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here. And again, this is a topic that we have delved into because other public officials in other states have had this happen to them, which is to be caught on a hot mic or a secret recording uh, saying something that was uh, very, on the lighter side, distasteful, but on the real side, quite uh, racist. And yet again, we have this small town about 200 miles southeast of Oklahoma City where officials were secretly recorded. And I think there might be another means of uh, bringing them to uh, account, which might be that they were possibly seen as meeting outside of their public meeting. If their laws are similar to those of Florida, we have statutes that require public officials to give notice if they're going to meet together and that there must be a record kept, et cetera, et cetera. And they're not supposed to be discussing public business outside of public meetings. So there may be some way that the uh, uh, district attorney of this local jurisdiction might be able to find some means of holding them to account. But ultimately, it will fall back to the voters, because as you said, in um, Oklahoma, as in many states, there are recording laws against recording people uh, without their permission or, you know, having some kind of type of secret recording device. And in this case, it looks like would seem as if there is a uh, a big uh, unfortunately loophole which will prevent this type of recording to be used against uh, them in a way that could be you know prosecuted with what exactly they said but it's just bad uh, 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 policy people staying off and bigotry for an entire group of people if you were yeah. a public servant, you are clearly supposed to be serving all the people, not just some of the people. And if you have racist attitudes and you clearly demonstrate them behind closed doors, and unfortunately you're found out in this type of way, uh, it needs to be, or maybe I should say fortunately found out in this type of way, you know, I think the governor is right. They should resign and the voters should demand it. There should be protests in the streets. There should be people signing petitions to remove these individuals because clearly they are not uh, uh, focused on the public good, nor do they see themselves as representing everyone equally. I think so. I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, Suzette. And I think this is a problem because if you really think this way, and I'm assuming 
that since you're standing behind closed doors without my, you know, without cameras, without the PR, this is how you really think. So I, it, it's hard for me to be like, oh no, they're just talking. No, this is behind closed doors. This is how you really think. This is your attitude. This is your view of people in the world. It's automatically as soon as the public know that this is how you you actually think, you should automatically be disqualified. There shouldn't be this call for resignation. And and I'm, and I'm seeing this in LA and I'm seeing it across the country. It's like a call for resignation. You, you're talking about a person, you, you want a person to willingly give up a seat of power and influence because they got caught in being who they are. That's not happening. That is just not happening, Suzette. That's not happening at all. And I think that, that the law should change. I think that, you know, as much as we talk about the freedom of speech, which is a very, very important one, probably one of the most important uh, constitutional ideas that we have on the books, this type of thing, it, it goes against the idea of having a representative for the people. You should not be represented if you are anywhere, you should not be represented by a person that hates you. That just well, doesn't make sense. I, I'm, I'm drawn to some of the historical context of, you know, the United States having literally segregationists that were serving in the U.S. Congress openly. Right. Right. And that was their political position. So there will be those who argue that, you know, people should be allowed to serve regardless of their so-called politics and actual bigotry and that the voters are the ultimate uh, deciders of who will stay and who will go. Um, but in this modern era, we have had this kind of, I don't know, outpouring where we're seeing it more often that unfortunately we think, or at least it's being kind of uh, presented to us in the media that, you know, we are post-racial and clearly we're not. So maybe it is time that we develop some, some laws around behaviors and attitudes that modern times, I think across the board, and again, there will be people who take exception to this because there are people who want to, uh, you know, propose um, division and actually do harbor uh, racist attitudes and want to still serve. And maybe there are people that will vote for them. But yeah, I do believe that there, and I'm also thinking as to whether there will be bodies that will institute these laws against themselves. Do you understand what I'm right, saying? Right, right. It would almost have to come from Congress, some some sort of framework like the um, hate crime laws that add on to to law uh, to cases, possibly like the one we're going to discuss with Ralph Yarrow. But yeah, it, it might be high time to actually consider this. But will we see self regulation? I'm not sure. Right. Then that and that's the big that's the big question. Will we see self regulation, especially in a country where states carry a lot of power? Uh, when it comes to these type of issues. Folks, we got to take a quick pause. When we come forward, I'm going to get to your comments. Chris Big, I see what you got to say. Very interesting comment. Sherilyn, I wanted to uh, share what you got to say and so many more. So stay with us. We're getting into it, folks, right here on The Culture, here on the Black Star Network. Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. Soil, you will not white people are losing their damn minds. An angry pro Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear.
Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm real um, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be black own media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We've been talking about leaked audio and more importantly, talking about the use of racist and hate speech uh, that we're finding that a lot of officials, state officials are saying uh, in these leaked audios from across the country, from whether you're talking about from California to Oklahoma to Tennessee and more places, more of political officials, more public servants are expressing their disdain, their hatred, and in some cases, like the one in Oklahoma, even going as far to talk about committing murder for individuals that they do not like. Should this level of speech disqualify you automatically, point blank, with no call for resignation, should it automatically disqualify you from public service? I've been checking in with my sister, Suzette Speaks, TV host and attorney, and I wanna hear from you folks. So crew, y'all have been checking in, so many of you, and I'm good. To, I'm glad to hear, uh, uh, glad to see some new faces and new voices on this situation. Uh, but let me go to Chris B. Chris, you started it off. I don't know, Chris, if you just like to say stuff to ruffle people's feathers. Suzette, I don't know if that's the way Chris likes to roll. But Chris said, uh, everyone is slightly racist and definitely prejudiced. Everyone. That doesn't mean they cannot lead effectively. No. I think no. all of us do have our our, our we got biases. biases. Yeah, exactly. But to think one race is superior, depending on how he's defining racism, no, I don't agree with that. Don't agree with it. And that does affect how you lead effectively. What? Chris, what? How how do you lead people that you hate? No. You, you, hey, y'all, y'all see the tumbleweed running across <laughs> the screen? It's like crickets. How do you lead people that you hate? If you got a disdain for someone, they're part of your constituency. How can you think about their best interest and well-being? If you hate them, if you don't like them, if you can't stand them, how does that happen? How do you get past it? See, that's the problem in this country, Suzette. The problem is, is that we think we can just uh, um, categorize, for lack of a better word. We could just chop it up like, no, my personal view of things it can be put to the side when I'm, you know, no, it doesn't. But this is public service, folks. Mm -hmm. A lot of policies that we see coming into uh, into fruition, a lot of policies, whether you're talking about from the federal level all the way down to the local level, that is rooted in someone's attitudes. That comes from someone's beliefs on how they see the world. And I so would you have Mm -hmm. huh? Go ahead. I was just going to say, in some of these smaller jurisdictions also, you have certain people that wield a lot of power. So as a, a lot. Person, you see big cities where you would get a public outcry, where you see people, you know, writing um, uh, on social media and in newspapers, et cetera, and putting public pressure on these individuals. Sometimes in these smaller jurisdictions, you know, you see there are are and they are friends when it comes to the different parts of government and they work together we've seen it in cases that came out of uh atlanta and the shooting of ahmaud arbery we've seen it just recently the murdoch family and that terrible case uh that came forward and how much power one family kind of uh, exercised over this very small community, being in law enforcement, being uh, attorneys and being, you know, very respected in a very small community. So you can have, you know, pockets of of our, our people that justice demonstrate, uh, they still demonstrate questionable uh, beliefs. Right, right. And, 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 and and you're absolutely right about that. Let me go back to the crew because folks are checking in. Um, uh, Sherilyn, you said, I know that there are people that may disagree and say the First Amendment covers what they say. Please feel free to say whatever you want. 
just know that there's consequences. Is that a great, I think, I feel like with, I agree with Sherilyn on this one, Suzette. I feel like that's the best view and approach to take um, with uh, the First Amendment. What do you say about that, especially as a, as a lawyer? Yeah, I, I would say as, first of all, I answer this as a voter, I would want to know how you truly feel. I want you right. to speak up about your, right, right, your right, beliefs right. because what's very difficult is to kind of regulate closet racists and people who have these uh, beliefs and ideals and, and, and carry this ideology quietly while purporting in the public sphere to be equal and, and you know, want justice for all, where they're secretly, if you're looking at this Oklahoma uh, case here, they were, I would say, considering conspiracy even when they were talking about wishing they could hang these reporters. And I have a, a excavator, said one uh, public official, and I know where there are two deep holes, said another of these four public officials. And it was really scary talk. Um, but again, they didn't know they were being recorded. So I'm like, is this the norm? And I think it should be very eye opening to every voter. So that we are understanding, again, what we sometimes get in the public space is not really who these folks are. And when they are showing us their true selves, they need to be called out, held to account and voted out, if not removed, if they've broken any laws in their jurisdictions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pauline, you checked in and said, Pauline Hurt, you said there is always laws set up to protect these races by not being able to record them without their knowledge. These people are talking about killing people. We need to know who they are. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and again, like, you know, the way that this particular recording was done, the reporter uh, in Oklahoma kind of left his uh, his recording device there. And because he was investigating corruption and, and other um, uh, misuses of, of state resources from state leaders. So he recorded them. That's why he did it. He, he recorded them. That's why they're talking about the father, the son, and other folks that are part of this newspaper, the local newspaper there in Oklahoma, to 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 to, to do harm to their family and essentially conspiring to kill them. One would even as far as to say, this is a public official say, look, I, I know a guy in the mafia out of Louisiana. He can he can knock them off. And then another guy say, Hey, I know a couple of places that you can dump the bodies. Yeah. And that his pawpaw would have whipped him good. I he was, was like, not, not the pawpaw, not to whip them good. <laughs> like, where, where are we? What are we doing here? This is this goes to fitness to serve. Like this type of mentality is sickening. And so when they thought they weren't, you know, in the public eye, and they were carrying on this back and forth, uh, it's 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 just it's disgusting. And I'm part of me is happy that it was recorded, even though I know again it, it's inadmissible because it was most likely illegally recorded without their knowledge. Right. But I think as a reporter, I don't know, we also have a code of ethics and journalism <laughs> and how you obtain information uh, to kind of wear the other side uh, a hat for a little bit. Uh, so he has to be very careful. He said that he was being threatened and he felt like his life was threatened. He and his son had uh, purchased or basically run this local news, print news paper. Um, it's not available online because I was looking for it. But um, for more than 40 years, the paper was started in 1905. And they do, you know, investigative journalism and figuring out what's really going on in their downtown and people didn't like it. So just to kind of hear what really goes on, it, it is really eye opening for Aji. And then look, an official Seneca, you checked in and said, look, if there aren't any laws to remove them, the public should definitely shame them and yeah. vote them out. They have to make examples of these racist people. I understand and I would wholeheartedly agree. But unfortunately, we're also living in a time, Suzette, in official Seneca, where voter values, people don't care how racist you are, i.e. Trump. Uh, people don't care. You have, even outside of the Trump situation, there were races in the 2020 election where people, one guy, I remember reading about one guy who owned who killed his wife he was on he was a, a suspect in the murder of his wife and he was running for public office I know. like how do you know this information like how do you how do you go to the ballot box knowing you know what this person is a possible could possibly be a murderer you know what this person is a racist but you know what their economics is they got a great economic plan like mm -hmm. what <laughs> you can't the bar, so low. Character, mm -hmm. man. the bar is too low for our too producer. low mm -hmm. Too low. The vote, and see, here's the why. Here's why the bar is too low. If 
and, and people say, well, vote them out. Well, who voted them in? I didn't get who a chance to look at the, demog the demographics of this particular area because I wanted to see how many black folks live here. How many people like if I had more time to research because I was wondering if they would stand a chance at keeping their seats. That That is really scary because it's a, it's a quite a prospect if the demographics lend to it. Right. Right. And we already talked about this is that that 50, nearly 60 percent of black people in this country live in Confederate states. The for the original 13 states, this is based on Pew Research, 56 percent of black people in this country, folks, we live in states that hate us. Strong, but not. <sighs> so if we if we talk about. If we're talking about allowing these people in, we got to go back to where are our values? This is the thing that 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 has got, and I said this before, but this is the thing that's on voter that that should be on a ballot. Where are our values? If you 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 cannot you cannot chop somebody's personality up and say you're good with this, but you know even though you might have a problem with women, you might have a problem with LGBTQ, you got a problem with black people. I still like you you're still going to be the best person. And I even have some black folks who, who, who will take a Republican in part or they will take a lawmaker. It could be a Democrat. I don't care. It could just take a person in part and say, well, they, 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 they are the ones that's going to get us through. This is absolutely insane, folks. I mean, I got to say this. This is absolutely insane. There's no way in the world that you can vote in a racist and expect a racist to think about your best interest. That's, and as a black person, Latino person, Asian American, that is absolutely insane. Well, I, absolutely I, will, insane. I will just caveat the, to what I believe is there are people within these states that have ideology that is not friendly and down, downright uh, uh, bigoted towards minorities. Not every state, not every leader within these states. I think are standing, you know, on the wrong side of history. There are people that are progressive. There are people that yeah. do think. Um, you know, that all humankind deserves the same treatment under the law. But we do have remnants of people that want to uh, take things backwards and have there be kind of like a, a, a multi-class tiers under yep. the law. And that's not what this Constitution provides. Um, I would also say this pretty much started when, or no, not even started, was highly amplified after the election of Donald Trump, because that's what people did when they right. held their nose and voted for someone who had been so problematic in so many other areas of business, of, of, of how he treated women, et cetera, and not to rehash all of that. Of life. But, but they held their nose and they voted for him. And so there was the prime example of, well, we don't really like the person, but he's gonna get us the policy changes that we want and that we need. So we're gonna continue to vote for someone who has questionable, you know, character flaws, right? And ideologies and and other, you know, behavioral issues of the past. We're gonna look past that because we need this person to win because he's popular so that we can get our agenda through. I think that was the biggest uh, example of this type of, of attempt to parse a politician. Oh, we'll take the good and the bad because we want the good. And again, I think it costs us too much in society in the long run. And we're seeing that played from that national scene down to yeah. the levels of government. Absolutely, absolutely. Folks, we gotta take a quick pause. When we come forward, let's uh, switch gears. Talking about racism, let's talk about the recovery of 16-year-old Ralph Yarl. This is the, the little black boy who was shot in the head because he knocked on his neighbor's house mistakenly We'll share with you some of the latest developments, what President Biden had to say, and uh, more importantly, talk about the stand your ground laws that may keep, get uh, this 84 year old from from not doing any prison time. So we'll talk about that. Stay with us. Join us in a conversation. You're tuned into the culture right here on the Black Star Network. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! A real uh, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now 
We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? When you talk about Blackness and what happens in Black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. All right, folks, welcome back to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. We've been uh, checking in with my sister, Suzette Speaks. But now we want to switch gears and talk a little bit about the recovery of 16-year-old Ralph Yarl. And if you, you, you know that Ralph Yarl is the 16-year-old who was shot in the head uh, when he knocked on the door of a neighbor by mistake looking for his twin brother. The neighbor, Andrew Lester, 84 years old, he was charged over the shooting. Um, and um, I want, it, it, it came in, let's, let's, let's just show a picture of Mr. Lester here. Uh, Cause um, I think that it, it speaks volumes about, this case is so disturbing and so heartbreaking. And it's only by the grace of God that 16 year old Ralph Yarl was able to survive um, this attack on him. He is in the hospital. He is making a recovery. He's making a slow recovery. According to hospital officials and family members, he has been working on everything from speech to walking. And so this uh, case is such a, uh, it's such a disturbing, disturbing case. Um, the only thing that they have charged Mr. Andrew Lester with has, is assault in the first degree and armed criminal action. There he is. Just because a young black boy knocked on your door and you felt quote unquote threatened that you felt like you had to shoot him in the head. Now, the other thing about this is that uh, according to the prosecutors, they have said that Ralph did not cross the threshold of Mr. Lester's home to compel him to, to, to take this action. I'm gonna bring my sister Suzette Speaks, TV host attorney back into the discussion. Um, it's hard to talk about this case, Suzette. This one is a rough one for Aji. Really it's, it's, really, it's really hard to talk about this. This was only a week ago that this case happened national attention there have been so much outpouring of love and support for little brother ralph um but it's very hard to talk about this situation it's even harder to see how the police has handled this situation in kansas city um i i was reading the report and he uh he he <laughs> He, a couple of things. He denied sh the shooting the boy in the head and the arm, telling authorities he believed he was protecting himself from a confrontation. That's the other thing. Sir. No. The prosecutor said that they, they believe there was a racial component to the shooting. So, But Mr. Lester has not been charged with a hate crime and charging documents do not describe any alleged racial bias. The fact that they keep bringing that up 
it is so curious because I was watching interviews on Joanne Reed and other platforms to try to see if they have given the attorneys, uh, Lee Merritt or uh, Mr. Van Crump, any more information about what they mean about there's a racial component. But uh, that that is yet to be seen. But based on just the facts of what we've seen here, uh, there are people who are going to question, you know, what this gentleman, Mr. Andrew Lester, was thinking when he came to his door. It was later at night. Uh, he saw a, a tall figure. Uh, he's quite tall. Ralph Yarl is a 16 year old band student, star uh, musician at his high school. And he decided after the young man rang the doorbell to get his gun and to, through a glass door, shoot him and then shoot him again. Now, there is a, I wouldn't say dispute, but there are two versions of the facts that Mr. Lester told the police that Mr. Uh, or the uh, student, Mr. Yarl, touched the door handle and was trying to come in. Now, from his hospital bed, Ralph Yarl said, I didn't touch the door. I rang the doorbell. There were no words exchanged between the two. And then he was shot. So when we look at the possible defenses that Mr. Lester will raise, the uh, facts as they're being presented again, the versions that are coming from Mr. Lester saying that he was in fear of his life is going to be what is in question when we talk about this castle doctrine or whether uh, I do believe Missouri has a stand your ground law. I'm again licensed in Florida, so I'm more familiar with the Florida stand your ground law, et cetera. But again, we were talking about a body of law, castle doctrine, which says that you have the right to protect your home. You have, your home is your castle. And when you have the stand your ground component on top of that, it gets a little bit more uh, complicated because there are a couple of components, whether there was a, a trespass, did someone come on your property without being invited, right, illegally? Right. And then was there an actual element of fear? And that is the subjective part, because he says he was in fear of his life. But based on the facts, is it reasonable to believe him is, is where the question will lie. So, I mean, and, and I think that's the other part about it. The, the thing that disturbs me the most is, well, there are two things. One is, I don't know how they can deny that there is not a racial component in this, right? Like, you really should check it out. But then, two, the stand your ground piece, because this is, uh, this is a, a very controversial law. It started, of course, in Florida, and it kind of spread out all into to other states across the country. Um, so let me just share with folks. Let me just let me just share with y'all really quickly, folks, around what this stand your ground law being enacted at a state level, and it allows these individuals, any individual, to protect themselves with the use of reasonable force, including deadly force, to prevent death or great bodily harm. Right, as it states, as a, as of right now, there are twenty eight states that have the stand your ground law on the books. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, uh, Mon uh, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, North Carolina, North Dakota, o Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and West Virginia, Wyoming. 28 states that have this law on the books. And there's a component of this law, as you know, Suzanne, and I'm just sharing this for those yes. who don't know, mm -hmm. where the duty to retreat or an obligation to step back and avoid confrontation where possible is removed under most stand your ground laws and it's dubbed shoot first laws by critics. Yes. So we saw this again first in, in the common law, which was brought to this country from England, which common law means basically judge made law and from the custom, right? So there was an understanding again, your home is your castle and you have the permission to not uh, invite anyone who you do not want to be there, and you have also the ability to protect that castle. So as it came over here to the United States, uh, we've added this component, like you said, in the statutes. Now we move from the common law to adding 
this uh, stand your ground. Some people call it there, there was first the make my day law, meaning that, again, if you were in fear of your life and there was a trespassing that took place on your property, you could use lethal force. It was justifiable depending on the facts, depending on the circumstances. Right now, as you have pointed out with the stand your ground before in the common law, when you had castle doctrine, you had a duty to retreat when the when the eminent threat went away. You no longer could use uh, lethal force because, again, the threat now has ended. And then the person whose uh, home or castle it was then had to stop because no longer were you in fear. Stand your ground laws uh, for the most part now, as you've mentioned, remove the duty to retreat. So you can still use lethal force under certain circumstances to protect yourself or others. Right. It would be justifiable in, in certain cases. So what we're probably going to hear Mr. Lester argue is that he was indeed uh, in fear, as he put it, because remember, initially he was questioned and let go. Thank goodness for the protesters. Thank goodness for social media, for people calling the office of the uh, uh, state attorney or the prosecutor saying, hold up, why is he not in custody? So they revisited what happened. And again, based on what Mr. Lester says, he thinks he was in fear of his life. Well, I ask you why the second shot, since there is no duty to retreat. After the, the boy is laying on the ground, after you shot through your glass door the first time, hitting him in the head, what was the second shot? Were you still in fear of your life when you were standing over him and, and shot in his arm? So that, I think, is where we're seeing these now charges levied because, again, you do not have a duty to retreat, but was there actual uh, a fear and actually was there trespass is really, I want to go back to the first element. Did he cross over the threshold? Did he try to touch the doorknob? According to Ralph Yar, he said he didn't touch the door. But of course, the story changes. Mr. Lester's version says I can't, he tried uh, to touch the door. So yeah, there are parts of this that again, again, based on the facts now, the prosecutors have said they can charge them with the two charges that you mentioned. Let but me. It, it would be it would, it would be interesting as we got to take another pause. But it would be interesting to see interesting to see how many black people have used stand your ground law and walked away from the shooting of a person. Hmm. Yeah, because be. every time I heard about this law, it applies to white people. And I'm this ain't racism, folks. This is just let's just keep it. Let's just put it where the goats can get it. When we hear about stand your ground, it's about white person shooting, killing harming a black person. How many black people have been able to use this law in, def in their defense of shooting somebody else? I know it's happened, but I don't know in what, you know, frequency, you're right, and how often it happens. Right. McCall, you said, it seems to me like this stand your ground law only applies to certain people. I'm just saying, that's, my, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Look, I gotta take a quick pause. When we come forward, more of, more of, the, of your comments, crew, I want to hear what, what you're saying about this as we're talking about the recovery of little brother Ralph Yarl. Um, a lot of money has been raised. I'll even share with you what the president had to say and so much more. So stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Pull up a chair. Take your seat. The Black Tape. With me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network, every week. We'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. 
We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We've been talking about the recovery of 16-year-old little brother, Ralph Yarl, who is uh, slowly and amazingly is making a recovery after being shot in the head by 84-year-old Andrew Lester, a neighbor of his in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, this case has garnered national attention because of the, the elements from everything from race to gun violence and just to overall talking about, we are at a point and then at a place and culture in our country, folks, where as a simple thing of, of ringing the doorbell of your neighbor may get you killed. I want us to think about that part too. That if you go and just go to the wrong house, you may not be able to come back home over a simple interaction, simple knock the on the door and you just get killed um i want to bring my sister back sister uh my sister suzette speaks uh it reminds me of the situation of botham jean in the sense that when that officer went into his apartment and shot him in his own apartment because she didn't know where the hell she it just it just reminds me When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm a real um, revolutionary right now. I thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. Mm -hmm. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene. A white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. It's an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage. 
as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. I uh, wanted to jump right back into the conversation as we talk about the recovery of Ralph Yarl. And um, Suzette, very quickly, I just wanted to bring up the point of what we saw with the Botham Jean case, where the police officer, the white uh, police officer, went into the, the wrong apartment shooting and killing Botham Jean. And, and, and it's like this idea, like, first, you were in the wrong. You don't know what the damn what your damn you know what your own place looks like, but more importantly, to automatically jump to that decision in a very very quick in that quick period of time. You know, you come into somebody's house and then you don't know where you are, and then you just automatically you don't address the person, you don't say who you are, you just pull out the gun and shoot them. Same thing. It's just so, it's reminiscent. Of course, it's not the same circumstances, but it's reminiscent of the lack of judgment that we see a lot you know we're hearing more and more stories like this and it's it, it, it's it's disturbing to say the least that folks are so quick to just go to a violent uh response to a situation without thinking without asking questions you just shoot first mm -hmm. and people will ask if that person who lacks the judgment of seeing someone at their door ringing a doorbell and then wanting to shoot them directly through the door um, deserves to have a firearm. I think people are making uh, the assumption that there was some other motiv motivation, which again would be a reasonable assumption in this case, because why would a reasonable person look at somebody through a glass door and shoot at them if they are not being attacked, if you know someone is not trying to intrude on their property, it's not okay. I think there's a public policy interest here too, because we cannot have as a society, it'd be okay for people to shoot first at the, the ring of their doorbell. Like this is something that is kind of larger in terms of our, our public policy. We just had something similar happen in New York where right. uh, a young lady was turning into, now New York does not have stand your ground laws, but was turning into uh, a wrong driveway with her friends. And, and when they were trying to turn back out, they she was shot and, and later passed away. So, and she was white, right? Right. So this is dangerous for everyone in our society. If we allow something like this uh, to, to, to kind of like go uh, um, unchallenged by the court system. So I'm very happy that the public outcry helped push this district attorney to do the right thing, which was to bring charges. And if it needs uh, an element that has to do with, you know, the racial component, such as a hate crime uh, 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 increase to the charge, we need to see it because unfortunately Absolutely. people are going to say he's old, et cetera, et cetera. As it was pointed out by uh, a couple of commentators I was watching earlier, you know, we have people well into their 80s serving all over Congress, all on in the Senate, all over the House of Representatives. So if, if we need to also look at the policy behind maybe continuous mental health checks past a certain age when it comes to gun ownership, et cetera, et cetera. So people can understand whether or not uh, that that particular gun owner still has the aptitude to make decisions that are not going to hurt innocent people. Maybe that will drive some of the conversation around policy as well. But yeah, everything in this case, again, it just it just feels wrong that a 16 year old can go to the wrong house and then end up shot in the head uh, without having a conversation or or exchanging of words. There are so many other alternatives Mr. Lester could have done, called the police, you know, all kinds of things. But he chose to take the law into his own hands. And he and initially it didn't seem as if he was going to face any consequences. But we're glad now that he has been charged. Uh, and that's the sad part. 
that's the other sad part that you got to go back and like, oh, oh okay, we just, it should have been initially we're going to handle this versus mm -hmm. after public pressure. Okay, let's let's go back and charge him. You know what I'm saying? And not even charging him with like attempted murder. It's like an assault charge, assault. Well, you have to prove a uh, mental state. That's the real hard part. The man was, okay, here's the thing. Okay, we say you got to prove mental state. The man said he denied it, shooting the boy. Well, who shot him? He was how, in how, how do you, how do you, you know what I'm saying? What you know what I'm saying? That, if I was a, a detective, I would be like, what? How are you going to say, I didn't shoot him? So he came up on your porch and all, and, and just some mystery gun shot this boy in the head and in the arm. And Ralph Yarl says, while he was laying there, the, Mr. Lester said to him, don't come back around here. There, there's, there are so many parts that lead to it being about something else. Lead us Intent. to believe the facts seem to be painting that picture. All right, very quickly, because we, we, you know, we got to take our next pause. Laura, you checked in and said, anyone that does any type of delivery, mail person, delivery person, your job is now considered as a dangerous job now. How are these companies going to deal with this issue? Great point. Great Excellent point. People point. go to knock on people's door all the time. All the time. Uber, DoorDash, UPS, FedEx, FedEx all them. Yeah. delivery mail person, Amazon. Yeah, like you, I said, I, I've had packages come to the door and I forgot that I even ordered something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. Amazon got a situation now where you can you can, you know, fast track your packages. Those packages can come early in the morning. Yeah. Or right? late at and night. Before dawn, very yeah. late at night. Yep. So 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 now we're in a situation where you can just you don't even have to ask questions. You could just shoot through the door. And it's absolutely I mean, it's horrific that we've gotten to this point. But of course, I, it's hard for me to believe an 84-year-old white male who 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 has said those things to little little black boy that race is not a part of. Mm -hmm. That race was not a part of. You probably looked through the peephole and saw that little boy first, or heard his voice, and you just made an assumption and you went and you proceeded to shoot him. And then you shoot him in the arm while he's laying on the ground. That that second shot, I think, is what does does him in, because he, again, when the threat has subsided, if you're in fear, the second gotcha. shot to me, uh, yep. it takes a different type of mental state. Absolutely. Look, we got to take a quick pause when we come forward, folks. Uh, let's switch gears and talk about sports we're going to check in with my guy scotty of all scripts tv and we're going to ask the we're going to just have a discussion about the lessons of betting on yourself folks stay with us that conversation is up next and more right here on the culture on the black star network Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. Soil, you will not white people are losing their damn minds. An angry pro Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Pull up a chair, take your seat, the black table. 
with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Hi, I'm Pastor Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. Don't you think it's time to get wealthy? I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show on the Black Star Network focuses on the things your financial advisor or bank isn't telling you. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad, and this is The Culture here on the Black Star Network. All right, let me just um, have this different conversation as we talk about sports, but it's also a conversation that I think can apply to life in general, as sports is always about life in some way, shape, or form. So uh, in a few moments, we're going to be checking in with our sports contributor, Scotty from Offscript TV. Still got my sister, Suzette Speaks. As we talk about the lessons of betting on yourself, and this comes out of the big news coming from the NFL, where NFL quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagle, Mr. Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, who was a part of the Super Bowl, who went to the Super Bowl this season, um, he has agreed to a new deal with the Eagles, becoming the highest paid player ever. His contract that was negotiated, a five-year, $255 million contract extension. Look at the face of Jalen Hurts. Hey, Keenan, let's just blow that face. <laughs> of course, he was. this was during the game, but I'm sure he was feeling the same way once he got the word that this deal was going to happen. $255 million. He has a contract averaging $51 million per year in new money with $179.3 million guaranteed. And guess what, folks? He's only been a starter for two seasons. Wow. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to have this discussion with my, 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 my brother, Scotty, my sister, Suzette, because there is this cultural mantra that we always been saying, oh, bet on yourself, bet on yourself. Just as much as this deal, which is a major moment in NFL history and sports for a black quarterback and for a black athlete to be at this level, this is also a cautionary tale on the other side with another quarterback by the name of Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens and talking about the way he is going about or the, the, the effort he's trying to make to show that he is worth $250 million guaranteed. 
This is also a tale about a woman. Some of you may not have known, some of you may not know who this woman is, but trust and believe she is a power broker in the NFL. Her name is Nicole Lynn, a black woman, a young black woman who is actually the agent that brokered the deal for Jalen Hurts. And, the, and, the, and more importantly, she's a young black woman who took a chance on herself to get Hurts as her client. I'm going to bring in my, my, my voices. Let's bring in Suzette. Let's bring in Scotty. Scotty, what up? <laughs> Scotty! I get so excited when Scotty's here. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is this is this is like three people that took this whole idea of betting themselves into three different directions, Scotty and Suzette. You know, Jalen, he took it out on him. He 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 bet on himself by being one of the most improved players over a period of one year from being considered the 19th uh, in terms of um, his skills and accomplishments to rising to number four in terms of his numbers and his stats and his abilities. You have Nicole Lynn, who is this young and emerging voice and in, in power broker in NFL. Nobody knew who she was, but she was able to, to, to broker a major deal, and then you got Lamar Jackson, an accomplished, a decorated MVP quarterback who decided to go into his contract negotiations with no agent. I think he's getting some advice from his mom and probably some other family members. Nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. So it's nothing Not saying that. Hey, look, mom could be at the table. His mama know him. His mama know him. But not at the table. <laughs> Mom, you sit over there. Lord. Let's, <laughs> let's bring let's bring the agent and the lawyer right next to me. Sure, I'll take my like he is he is he is he's struggling right now. And I said this on my social media, on my Facebook page, when I heard the Jalen Hurts deal was was done, I knew it was it, it, it blew Lamar Jackson's ability to broker that type of deal for himself. It just totally, it, it did, Jalen Hurts hurt Lamar. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, Scotty, I'm going to start with you. And then, Suzette, I want to get your take. What's your take of this, sir? Okay. The lesson, this, is a, this is a cautionary tale when you bet on yourself. In Lamar's case, you can bet on yourself, but you trust and believe there's going to be some consequences if you don't bet on yourself the right way. Let, hey, Kenny, do me a favor. Keep it on the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he want to bring some smoke over here. I'm ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to see your face. First of all, let me let me talk to the community out there, right? I want to set the precedence. He's a Ravens fan. So he, I am a Ravens fan. He is speaking to you as a fan, okay? I just want to make that – I want to be very clear. He's a little biased, right? Now, my thing is this. The issue – and I think this is deeper than just betting on yourself – the NFL has a great way to divide the players that mm -hmm. the NBA does not have to deal with because the NBA players know their leverage in the system, which NFL players do not. So you give the you get a lot of of the me situation, right? That's why when the Colin the Colin Kaepernick happened thing, you were a lot of people were were surprised that some players jumped on, but a lot of people also understood that they weren't gonna mess up their bag to take a knee. They just weren't gonna do that, right? right. Okay. So, so in the sense of I'm I'm happy for Jalen Hurts, but it needs to be a time in the NFL where these players, quarterbacks especially, are coming together to to do it for each other and for the people coming behind them. Right, the guy who started free agency in the NFL never got to experience it, so it's things like that. That he set the precedence. He was like, yo, this is messed up. We need a free agency system. He 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 does it. He he protests for it. They get it a few years later. He never gets to be involved in it. But a lot of people don't want to put themselves on the line to not have their benefit in the front end and not and not really change the culture. And what could have and what Lamar is and what Lamar and Deshaun Watson. Sean Watson's deal is just crazy. But what they have done, they set a precedence of trying to say, like, listen, man, we don't have a long, extenuated time in the NFL. We need to have guaranteed contracts. We need to. We need to focus on getting that. Okay. So my thing is this. I'm, I'm, listen, 
Jalen Hurts is legit. Nicole Lynn is awesome. She's the first black woman to have a top five drafted um, NFL player. The guy from the Jets, uh, he was a DN, um, a D tackle. She got him. So she's, she's been around it for a little bit. All I'm saying is the bigger picture is I don't have a problem with Lamar betting on himself because him betting on himself is not just for him. It's for people behind him. You know okay, I mean? let me ask you this question. When the Baltimore Ravens offered Lamar a one hundred, uh, a $250 million deal, 175 million guaranteed back in September of 2022, why didn't he take it? It all depends on if he wanted 200 fully guaranteed. If he wanted, if he wanted two hundred million fully guaranteed, and that was where he and was, some, and some and, and Scotty, let let me just throw this caveat out there, bro. There are some reports that said that he was going to get two hundred million. I don't know if you saw that too. I've seen one seventy five on a low end, and I've seen two hundred million on the high. I, I've seen both. I've seen. I yeah. saw uh, Pat McAfee where they, they came out on that on, on his show and said that. Listen, if he had two million guaranteed, and he said, and he said, nah. Listen, he by himself on that one. Because I would have signed that contract so far. <laughs> so, so, I would have like, wrote it in pencil. I'm like, yo, just cut it. <laughs> I'm like, give me a Sharpie. I need something, I need something that's going to stick. It's going to bleed. Give me a Sharpie, bro. You know, I would have signed everything. I would that thing so fast. But it just all depends on what Lamar Jackson is willing to stand on. And at the end of the day, if he dies on that hill, for fully guaranteed for a fully guaranteed contract, that's just a hill he he's ready to die on. And I think sometimes, you know, listen, let's be real. It's not like he's not going to get paid. So if he falls and the Ravens end up getting him for one sixty fully guaranteed, and you'll say he lost, or I say you win. Anytime you get your whole contract fully guaranteed, it's a win. Mm-hmm. I get that. I get that. But see, here's the thing, and Suzette, I want to get your take on this because you know when you when you start taking those type of chances in life, right, as well as in sports. you taking those big chances. You don't know what the situation is, right? And this is why I'm, I'm advocating for good representation, good people around you to advise you. Someone could have said back in September of 2022, hey, Lamar, A, considering you, you got an MVP behind you, yes, but you haven't won an AFC championship, you didn't make it to the Super Bowl, but this is a big investment, I would take this deal. Now it comes across as greed. Now it comes across like you don't know. Now look at this. We're in April of 2023. I'm sorry, say it again? As a fan. No, it's not as a fan. It's not as a fan. Look, yeah. now we're in April 2023, and now he's, now he's, it looks crazy. Suzette, talk to me. What's your take on it? Listen, I can't get in um, to the weeds because I'm a, a lightweight a bit when it comes to this. I want to ask more questions and probably I have answers to here. And Scotty, I'm hoping uh, you can illuminate me on why is it different from the NBA to the NFL? Is it the collective bargaining power as to why NBA players tend to have more guaranteed money? Yeah, they, they've uh, it's just they have, they have guaranteed guarantee. Guaranteed contracts. So every sport has guaranteed contracts, but the NFL, right? So it's just when you're in the NFL, the money that you get on signing, if like you, it, that's that's your guaranteed money, right? So if like if you get, let's say, uh, like Sean Watson, he's two thirty guaranteed. Well, he gets a signing bonus, and then everything else is guaranteed after that. Well, if it's not guaranteed, you get what you get, and then if they cut you the next year, you don't get all that money. That money is gone. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of teams, they do that post-June cut because it's called an active roster bonus, right? When, you, you're, on a, when you're on a roster, <laughs> active roster bonus. So sometimes that kicks in. So it could be some teams, it'd be, it might be $1 million for a player. For I think for um, some players, it might be twenty to $15 million if they're on, the, on there on the active roster bonus. So you have different things like that. So to me, when it's in the NFL – that's why I never have a player trying to get everything they can because the next year he can blow his knee out. He can blow his back out. He right. Can, right. And you And that money is just gone. You know what I'm saying? So get yeah. everything you can. Right. If you're at the top of the mountain. Just try to go, go, just go for it. So that's my, that's my thing. So, so the thing is about this is that this is, this is the part again, this is a cautionary tale. Like you, you, you got, it's like the old song, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. The timing of things. Let me just share very quickly with folks the let me Akeem, let's put that quote up on the idea of this timing and preparation. This is what Kelly Lynn, this is what the black woman 
the the the, the dynamic agent of Jalen Hurts, what what she says she did. Nicole. And, Nicole. Oh, Nicole, excuse me. I said Kelly. Mm -hmm. Nicole, thank you. Uh, uh, let's put her the quote up there very quickly, Keenan, before we take our next pause. This is what she said. Take a look at this, folks. She said, looking at this is coming out of uh, uh, USA Today. It's a classic story involving timing, preparation, social media, and hustle. Nicole Lynn sent Jalen Hurts a direct message, a DM on Instagram, making her pitch as he ramped up for the draft process in 2020 after finishing up his college career at Oklahoma. She said, hey, have you picked an agent? If not, I love to link. She later described her effort to Sports Illustrated as a total Hail Mary. That's how she be gotten to be this man's agent. She slid in his DMs, she said. Listen, talk about being on yourself. Okay. Listen. Uh, okay, let's let's give the whole story. She had already had a top five pick two years ago. So it's not like she wasn't in like she wasn't it's not like she no i'm not saying that i'm yeah, just still yeah. saying like she still she still put herself out there i feel you i feel you but she you know what i'm saying and here's the question that i have that i have to ask it's hard for me to believe if she slid into jalen hurts dm on that what's the likelihood that she did not slide into oh, lamar jackson gosh here we well, go now <laughs> this boy is a conspiracy theorist why has it got to be a conspiracy theory bro no I have another question for Scotty, though, with regards to... Yeah, you better ask Scotty this Oh, And I know we have a break, uh, but maybe after we come out after break. But I want... There's been a lot of pushback on social media I've been seeing about how much, quote-unquote, credit she deserves for this. And after the break, I'd love to ask you what you think about that. Oh, I'll That's work. interesting. I'll tell you. That's interesting. How much credit does she deserve as a, an athlete's agent in getting a deal done? All right, we're going to take a quick pause. We got to take a quick pause. Scotty's going to continue to yell at me. Uh, Suzette, is <laughs> it all. Yay. Suzette is going to question my judgment. <laughs> well, stay with us. We got a lot to talk about here on the Culture or the Black Star Network. <laughs> When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to PO Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene. A white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. Oh, that soil, you will not. White people are losing their damn minds. An angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage 
as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Folks, um, welcome back to the show. I am. Uh, well, let me just let me just share this with you. We're talking about the lessons of betting on yourself. Talking sports. Got my guy Scotty. Got my sister Suzette. This is a picture of Nicole Lynn. This is the agent for Jalen Hurts. That is the sister right there, Nicole right there, Jalen Hurts. Um, this is the agent that helped to broker the NFL. Um, Historic deal, 255 year, $255 million, $179.3 million guaranteed for the Super Bowl uh, quarterback. With only two years as a starter in the league, he, was, he has become the highest paid player in NFL history. And with a black woman, and I'm hearing, LaShonda, you checked in. LaShonda Gladden, you say his whole management crew are women. Love it. Get it, ladies. So apparently Jalen Hurts got a bunch of women around him, and he does have a girlfriend. So he, you know, he's being supported by a bunch of women on his team uh, uh, to, 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 to lead him to success. Binders so, full of women. <laughs> Sorry. What did you say? I said, uh, like Mitt Romney says, binders full of women. Sorry. Binders? <laughs> No, but I, I really wanted to ask Scotty because a lot of people, not a lot, I saw, you know, I'm going to read the comments and I want to see, you know, post it on the Shea Room, post it on all these other places, that I saw a few comments that stood out to me that said, you know, this is too much about her. You know, he's the one that put in the hard work. He's the one that, you know, goes hard in the gym and on the field. You know, they, they're they almost putting her front and center uh, and it's unwarranted. And I thought to myself, huh, I don't know that that's a majority opinion, but I saw it a couple of different places by different, you know, online people. So I wanted to know, uh, maybe Scotty and yourself, what do you think about that? Is, is Nicole uh, Allen a pivotal part to his obtaining such a lucrative all time largest ever contract? Or should we be talking more about him, the athlete and his abilities, talents and the hard work he's put in? Or is it a combo? I just, you know, since since I saw that, I kept thinking, who thinks like this? And I want to know if that's something that's very, you know, common or pervasive. As an agent, you only can negotiate what your client is worth. Hmm. Oh, it, it 90% goes to Jalen Hurts. 10%. Mm -hmm. 10% is what she does in the background. Now, this is the thing with agents, right? Because I actually have a friend who is a, he, he actually is an NFL uh, licensed agent. He says there's a database that you can go and pull everybody's contract up. And they have all the terms and agreements and whatever, and you literally copy and paste, and you add whatever you want to add to to make your client. So let's say Faraji's my client. He's a wide receiver. He's top three, and the last contract was this. Okay, I want to see him go here. So that's how he becomes the highest played receiver in the league, and that's why that term doesn't mean much because wow. it really doesn't because you know what you know what's coming you know Joe Burrow's coming you know Justin Herbert is coming so that's going to last for about two months and then Joe Burrow's contract is about to hit and then he's the highest pay because Joe Burrow is going to be like Jalen Hurts should be getting more than me I'm taking the Bengals to the Super Bowl okay did you did you hear me the Bengals <laughs> no <laughs> you know what I'm saying and, and, and look this is the face Lamar Jackson will have <laughs> With Lamar. Okay. And this is going to my point, right? This is my point. Oh, no. The only reason I would tell Lamar Jackson to get an agent is because the NFL is making it harder to do negotiations without an agent. Mm. Get contact teams in the background if you're if you're just a regular person, you're not certified. You can't reach out on behalf of him. 
because so you're it, they're making it harder for you not to have an agent. So it just makes sense to have an agent. But right. if you still want to better yourself by yourself, I mean, listen, if you're making 160 million and your agent gets, I believe, like four or five percent of that, dude, just take the just take the. <laughs> Just take the damn tax bill. Like, Jesus. I, I would love that for five percent. Pray to God. <laughs> Wait a minute. See, no, now here, no, 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 no. I gotta say this because Scotty, this is you and I are thinking the same way, bro. This is let me, let me share this with y'all. There's a book that I've been uh reading called The Laws of Human Nature. It's by Robert Greene. He wrote the book 48 Laws of Power. There's a section in the book called Success Delusion. Hmm. And in the book, as it talks about he, the very simple principle. He said that sometimes you can be so successful in one area of your life that you can delude yourself into thinking you're going to be successful in another area of your life mm. without help. No, so that's the, Michael Jordan with baseball. That's that's real. That's, that's Michael. Real. Look, you, we can name five people on our hand very quickly. Donald Trump going into being a president. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Success delusion. Because you can think, oh my gosh, I'm this guy in this space. If I, for example, said, oh, I'm, I know how to do TV and radio. I'm a broadcaster. I can do what Scotty does and be a sports guy. Please, at any time. I don't know stats. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where players coming from, from college. I don't, I don't have that. I delu I'm deluding myself. And we see this in our culture all the time where people think you're great in one area, you can definitely handle it. Oh, you don't even need no help. You don't need no help, no training, no professional development, no nothing. You can just go into that cold mm -hmm. I think, I to think. a different industry. That's a lie. We got to stop telling them. That's, that's, that's one of the big caveats. That's why I said this lesson on, on, on betting on yourself. Stop lying to yourself, thinking that you can do Oh, Suzette, she's an attorney. All of a sudden, she could be a chef. Right. I can be everything. Yeah. yeah. I could be anything. Yeah. If you have a passion for being a chef, that might be. But like, that's neither here nor there. My thing, see, Faraji is Faraji going to give you like the real philosophers. Like, oh, my. <laughs> I'm the dude from the street. I pay for it. Okay. I just, I pay. To get, I'm, I'm not. Listen, I'm a thousand air. I don't touch my oil. I pay people. Hey, no, wait, well, hey, 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 Scotty, you and me are the same dude, then, brother. Oh, man, listen, listen. Guy, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm not the guy. Look, I'm not the guy. Oh, no, dude. Oh, hey, bitches. Hey, look. I will call a plumber, <laughs> an electrician. I will call. Him. I look. Somebody said, "Well, Faraji, when I had my hair cut low, they were like, do you cut your own hair?'" Negative. Why would I cut my own hand when they're a barbershop? <laughs> I pay for the That's me. That's the guy. So when, 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 if, if I'm in a situation and I have to talk to people across the table, boardrooms, I'm bringing my publicist, I'm bringing my lawyer, I'm bringing my, my, my manager. I'm not, no. I agree. No, you I agree. guys are professionals. You Facts. train for this. Facts. Right. I agree with you on that one. No, I, I agree. I just listen because, you know, Women be trying to like you if you're not a man. If you, I'm like, I got, I ain't a fan. That's okay if y'all gotta call up to help. That's okay. That's I, all right. That's I, all right. I, 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 I chase the shot. You have other strengths. Praise God. You have other strengths. No, no, no. Here's the thing about being a man, Suzette. The man knows his limitations. Oh, and it's great. all right. That's and good. his weaknesses. He you knows what he can do and what he can't do. I'm not that guy. Listen, as long guy. as it get done. I'm not that guy. No I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to build homes. I don't know how to install pipes in all of <laughs> well, why don't you know how to do that, baby? No, you don't know not how to put them. At everything. That's you preaching? No, you yeah, preaching. Yeah, Pass yeah. the collection play because yeah, you know I know this is betting on yourself, but as men, okay, men bet on yourself, okay. If you know, we should. You can't do what you you know because women be like, oh, I need a man to. Well, I ain't that guy. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be honest. You gotta be honest. It's not to say you good. can't evolve. Listen, and this is not to say you can't evolve or right. you can't right. learn the new skills. I'm just saying, where I'm standing at this current moment as we're having this conversation, I'm not your guy. <laughs> Come on, man. But Take me knowing is half the battle. <laughs> knowing is half the battle. When you need help. When you need help, you need help. This is All right, look, 
we got a couple of moments left, but I want to, a, a, a Scotty, and Suzette, where does this take this? Suzette, you know, if a black woman, I don't care if it's, you know, Scotty said 10%, the sister is now in the spotlight for, for, for making things happen. Oh, yes. I can't so, wait to so, see so where, does, where do we go with this? Yeah, no, I think she's going to continue to be a, a superstar agent. I, I wonder again, uh, and now I think, you know, could any agent have done this? I don't know that that's true. That is true. You think that so? Is, that is absolutely true. Uh, She's not, well, again, I'll it, let your expertise speak to that. I'd have to kind of research that. Let me, let me ask you this, right? Like like some in certain situations as a lawyer, right? There's certain things that you just like. I do like like trial. Some trial attorneys are like, yo, you, you if you need a trial attorney, like right. I'm your guy, right? right? A specialty. But when you're in the NFL agent, all you're all you're trying to do is find the best athlete right. and hope that they pan out to what you think they're going to be. So when that time comes for them to, because what she's doing, she's invested in him, right? When he was going for rookie training, she paid for that. Mm. When she, when he was going to like for his NFL draft and all that stuff, she pays for everything. Oh, that, yeah, mm -hmm. so she's investing in him. Mm -hmm. so all but is that bad though? No, what I'm, all, I'm, all I'm asking is like whether it's an art for so back to my trial lawyer uh, friends, including myself, when I look at negotiation and how you know things come out when it comes to big mm -hmm. dollar cases, everybody's not created equal. Right. They might be same amount of years of practice, et cetera, and say they're just as good. But I know there are people that will get you, you know, the five figure, the six figure versus the seven figure. So I'm just wondering if there are agents that demonstrate different le uh, levels of capabilities. And if she therefore has now set herself apart or, or you're saying this is common among agents and that they have basically the same amount of, of, of uh, like capability because of, you know, I guess you're saying like the open share of all information of all contracts. And yeah. it doesn't seem like there's kind of this, you know, a, a gray area where there's some art and there's some finesse and there's some, you know. I think, the, I think the art and the finesse that you're speaking of is like mm -hmm. knowing ownership and knowing general management. Relationships, okay. You know, it's the relationships of that stuff of like how, like, hey, these people are pretty harsh negotiators. They won't go over this. So, you know, just knowing who you're dealing with because Lamar wouldn't know that, right? Because right. he's never been in all those rooms. He's never talked to all 32 GMs, you know what I'm saying? So even if even if the Ravens weren't to pay him, he don't know how to talk to the GM for the charges. He don't know how to talk to the GM from the commanders. He don't he doesn't know the art of that. So yes, right. those attributes help you when you get an agent because they understand those landscapes. Mm -hmm. But I know like certain agents, like I'm a Cowboys fan, so I know certain agents have relationships with this with the Joneses. You know, like mm -hmm. they're like, hey, you know, I got a guy, you know, I think you should give him an opportunity because they like, okay, you bring us this and da da da. So it, it can be that, but just the basics of the contract, right? Absolutely not. But I think the yeah. only thing that she did, and like she, I know Jalen's probably happy, is the no trade clause. He has a no trade mm -hmm. clause in the contract, and the Eagles have never done that in any Donovan McNabb, LaShawn McCoy, Deshaun Jackson, all their star player, Brian Westbrook. None of them have ever had a no trade clause. He's the wow. first one. So oh, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Scotty, it's always a pleasure. Yes. Always. always. It is always a pleasure. I uh, love you. See you soon, Scotty. I thank you, man. Uh, thank you for checking in. Folks, uh, make sure y'all can check out Scotty. Scotty, where can they find you, bro? Always, you catch me on YouTube, Off Script TV, Mr. Damon in the chat. He already knows where you can find me. Uh, and yo, just come out, check out. We're talking about HBCU sports and all other sports as well. Man, Scotty's one of the sharpest dudes. Sharpest dudes in uh -huh. I'm telling you, you're one of the sharpest dudes in the industry to talk about sports, the freshest voices out there. And I'm always happy that he joins us here on the culture here on the Black Star Network. Thank you, Scotty. Appreciate hey, it. Y'all take it easy. You All soon. right. Uh, hey, hey, Suzette, my guy, uh, Real Brooklyn said, as a man, I know my limitations. Let's just say it'll be the best two minutes of her life. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> real Brooklyn, yo. That might be TMI, real Brooklyn. That might real be TMI. Real Brooklyn, best two minutes of her life. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Oh, under promise, over deliver. Uh, speaking of which, we got to talk about the lawsuit against the Freaknik documentary. Stay tuned. That conversation is up next because we got a lawyer. <laughs> Stay no with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. <laughs>
Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real uh, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. Mm -hmm. You can't be black own media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Let me bring my sister Suzette Speaks in for our final conversation. <laughs> it's a lot going on in the chat. It's a lot going yeah. on here. Listen, I don't know what, I can't hardly keep up today. What in the world? Oh, boy. <laughs> Yo. mm -mm, no Yo, comment. Y'all are wild right now. Y'all are just, y'all are all over the place. Y'all are all over the place. All right, very quickly, um, I want to share. And talk about this lawsuit against the Freaknik documentary. We got a lawyer on the panel, y'all. She a lawyer. They and she don't just play one on the, TV. She's a real one. Aunties and uncles worried right now. If you was in hey. Atlanta, 94, 95, 96, <laughs> you real. I don't you understand that. Nervous. Look, check this out. The, the, now they come out they're saying that Freaknik documentary won't come out until next year. Yeah. 2024. And people are already sweating in 2023. What did y'all do at Freaknik? I'm so glad I was too young to be at Freaknik. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm so All right. Let me just say this very quickly. Um, a group of black women professionals, take a look at this, folks, because this is the situation is, is that there's this lawsuit against Freaknik, and some black women are saying they do not want to have this documentary put out. Take a look at this. This is coming from Black Enterprise, a group of Black women inter, uh, professionals comprised of one politician, three high-level corporate executives, and uh, one judge have lawyered up and are threatening to sue Hulu in hopes of stopping the documentary's release, according to News One. One woman, a married mother of three who makes over a million dollars annually, believes the documentary shows her in an unflattering light. And there are always, and there are already videos circulating online. She doesn't want her children to see. Dang. Dang. Is that the one? Is that is that her? <laughs> I don't want to make light of it because listen, I don't, no, 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 no. We must make light of this. <laughs> this was a no, wild time. I mean, this was a different time. This Suzette, is, I mean, Suzette, Suzette. You got it. You got it. You got to break this down to me, sis. You got to help me with this. No, well, what happens is, I mean, people's images are being uh, utilized 25 years past an event no. that they didn't even realize they were being, you know, recorded or that it would be used in an actual documentary uh, later on. So you have people who, again, in their early 20s, uh, late teens, even. Uh, young adulthood from around HBCUs and other colleges that went to Atlanta for, you know, this kind of very wild spring break uh, experience. Again, predominantly black people that were participating. And here we are, you know, 20 some years later, and there are images of you from when you were, you know, a, a young person, you know, joking and, 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 and slipping and sliding. And it's, it is really worrisome for many. 
And, you know, people have careers now. 20 years later, we thought, oh, wait, no one had cell phones back then. We're good, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. This is this is this is crazy because I like how people say, well, damn, there weren't no cameras. Let me tell you, yeah. I remember the 90s had cameras, y'all. When when did the 90s not have cameras? But when we, did people remember them old school joints that we <laughs> did y'all not see that? The heavy what did ones you think the that video was doing. You was like, girl, he put the little VHS joint right in there, put that joint, uh -huh. in, put that joint. He walking around. What? Ooh, you like, girl, and, ain't and nobody gonna see this. And the footage what? survived. And the footage. What do you think was gonna happen to the footage? I don't think they could have predicted they was gonna. Come make on, it come on. But but see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the fact that you want to stop the documentary again, folks. We gotta accept the fact that this is part of our culture. This is part of our history. It is what it is, right? And if you're afraid that you are gonna be seen in some unflattering light. That you don't want your children like you first and foremost have a conversation with your children now that's called damage control that's called preventive damage control hey you sit the sit the little ones down especially the daughters hey um alia you might see some things that mama and auntie did You can't Look, just I'm use changed my image, now. Roger. You can't just use my image, though. That's the thing. You can't use my image. Why is this? Is this up for? And that's what I'm saying. From a legal perspective, is it? Is it some sort of violation of law? Well, yeah. That well, that's what they're going to do. In a documentary, this is for document. This is not like a movie. This is not like this is a documentary. But this they is a did not different cons type of format. But. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but the argument that's going to be made, and I don't know which way it'll go if it actually makes it to court, um, but they're going to argue that it is utilizing their image without their permission, that they did not uh, allow for, you know, this producer, of course, is um, Luther Campbell. Uncle Luke is producing this uh, film, and it's going to come down to, like, fair use doctrine, whether this is something that was, again, in the public domain for a certain amount of time, and it has been substantially altered enough to be utilized in this type of way. Um, but I'm not sure if that will hold water because there are going to be people that say, that's me, that's my picture. I didn't sign a release. I didn't tell them that they can make money off of or commercially use my picture or my video. It wasn't on the little <laughs> ticket that was printed. And I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But I, I love watching documentaries. I watch all types of documentaries. It is absolutely damn near impossible for a filmmaker to go through each frame and say, hey, we need to identify this person. We need to send out a waiver for this person. We need to send out, you know what I'm saying? Like, is but that these even people realistic? are identifiable. These specific plaintiffs saw or have word that they are in these films. So for these five, they have been identified. And they don't want their their images utilized without their permission. So, so do you think they got a case? It sounds like you think they might actually have a case. It, it could be like I get. I don't. I haven't seen any of the actual material. How much? What is it? What are they doing? And um, would they have had a reasonable um, presumption that this might be distributed later? I don't. All of those things are kind of uh, you know what what the facts will hinge on. But I I wouldn't say that they don't have. A case because again they are identifiable within these uh, uh, images. So they're saying that's me, and I didn't give you permission to use anything that you know my likeness, my voice, anything in your documentary. So I do think there might be some grounds. Hey, look, I, my question is, what are you? Do what are? What were you doing to make you so afraid? Conscious thought you checked in and said it all depends on what angle they are viewed from. Now, guys, again, Freaknik was over 25 years ago. They don't even look the same. I, but you know, that especially as a politician, especially they say that one, you know, is is they're, they're well known people now. They have in their community, but we would, I mean, somebody gonna know, you know, the black community is very small. All right, y'all remember the, the, the whole Girls Gone Wild videos? You remember that, Suzette? I do. People got caught I mean, up in that too. People got caught up in that. Their home home uh, lives were wrecked and and you know lost jobs and all kinds of stuff. That stuff lives on forever. Once it's out, it lives on forever. Hey, 
Hey, and maybe that could be that. Maybe that could be the lesson that you. Teach but I think they with. may have signed something. I'm not sure if Girls Gone Wild was like signed releases. I'm not sure. I'm not sure 100. percent By I, that I, time, I, they I, were you doing know, it. it's hard. Like I say, I'm going back to that premise that very quickly as we close out. Um, that if you, it's like if you're at a a a, a community or citywide function, and then you, everybody is taking cameras. It's I just don't think they have the strongest case. I get it. They, they don't want to be seen in an unflattering light. But 30, 40, 30 years ago, we're thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and, and and if you are seen in an unflattering light, you can't say that's not me or just accept the fact that you were there. It's hard, but you got to accept the fact that you were there. I mean, right. I mean, people gonna want to protect their image. <laughs> I, don't know. I hear what you're saying, and I, get it. I, I kind of mentally you. assent to where you hey. are. But then I'm gonna say that I don't think they feel that way at all because they yeah. want to make sure, you know, the people who they establish themselves to be now, you know, that was in their youth, they didn't anticipate it being in a whole documentary. I mean, now when you go to certain performances, you'll see it in the small print at like a concert or something. They say, you know, your image might be taken and maybe utilized in future. future. And you know what? And guess what? Guess what? And you know what? And I know when we go to any place that, that that's an open situation, public situation where those cameras are present, your presence is saying, yes, I can. I I am. Uh, I, am I yes. consent to using my image. There's no way. You don't go to no concert and you know be like, no, don't use my image. I have had funny enough. I have had people when I'm having uh, women's conferences and et, et cetera, and I put my their pictures on my website and they've asked me to take it down. At a women's conference? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. I took it down. Like, sis, it's not that it's not that serious, but it's not that deep. It's really <laughs> but not that deep. what they have said to me, they don't want their image on this, or if I use it on a promotional flyer, so most people are happy, but there are people that are, nope, I don't want you to utilize my image. And I'm you know, I respectfully say, Okay. And I take All it right. That's fine. That's fine. So, but th this one again, they must be doing something uh, you know, very entertaining because <laughs> I was like, why won't the producer just take out their parts and keep it moving? But like maybe you don't know what the producer a, like like a from point a, from about a, from these a, specific women. I don't know. And from a filmmaker's perspective, you don't know what the producer is going to use. You don't know how the situation. You don't know what Hulu's going to say. And guess what? You might be making. And there's always a final cut. So what might be put in the in the in the trailer may not actually end up in the final cut of the project. It's still a year out. You don't but know. They say there's stuff that's leaking already. That's leaking already. Still in there hey yeah. man if some stuff got leaked to me first of you you, you got to take the shaggy approach you know what Raji? i'm telling you people it wasn't changed. me it wasn't me <laughs> they like auntie that looks like you it, it wasn't me <laughs> they have changed their lives they're respectable man. women look look and check this out check. hey look all jokes aside <laughs> what better way to talk about the power of redemption than to tend to be like hey this was what i used to be this is what mm -hmm. i used to do but look at me now everybody got the power to redeem themselves it was summer of 97. it was Come on, 90, 94. 97, 94, they didn't right? know what was going to be their future at that point they were not thinking about that they were on screen having hey, look what, everybody that showed up at woodstock but not everything was caught on film not everything was got on film and it was really crazy it's, yeah so i don't know I don't, I don't know. We'll see I what happens. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see. Suzette speaks, my sister. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. I always me. appreciate you. I always enjoy my Wednesdays with you, hanging out with you a little bit, talking about stuff. So, how can people check you out and all the great work you're doing, Suzette? Uh, come check me out on my channel. I'll be talking a little bit about femininity, black men, and mentorship tomorrow. I might awesome. switch my topic today and talk about more about Ralph Yarl, etc. But come over to my YouTube channel, please. Look up there Suzette Speaks. Hit the subscribe button and show some love. I appreciate you all. Shout out to all the Culture Crew. Always having a great conversation here on Wednesdays. I really talking it, but thank you, Ralph. Appreciate I appreciate you. you. I appreciate you, Suzette. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Culture. See you next week. As always. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. Make sure you continue to show your support for us here at the Black Star Network. Go to our website today, blackstarnetwork.com, and download the app. And most importantly, make sure that you offer your finances 
as we continue to fuel a movement, a digital platform like no other. So go to Black Star Network, follow us on social media as well. Also, check me out on social media at The Real Faraji on Instagram and Faraji on Twitter. We'd love to connect with you. And of course, continue to show up for us each and every day. Thank you for all of the new watchers of today's show. And thank you for my, 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 my down, my down, my day ones. Uh, culture crew members, I truly, truly appreciate y'all so much, so much, so much. All right, stay tuned. Up next is Roland Martin Unfiltered. As always, never be afraid to challenge what's wrong. Stand for what's right while being yourself in the process. God willing, we'll chat tomorrow for another exciting set of conversations right here on the culture, right here on the Black Star Network. Peace. Peace.